Hi everyone, Michael Brown back again. Welcome back to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop CS6 course. In this lesson we're going to discuss sharpening, a very important factor that you need to do to all of your images. Now if you remember when the image comes directly from the camera it's either a RAW file or a JPEG. If it's RAW it has no sharpening whatsoever. If it's a JPEG even without any custom settings, the computer in the camera will automatically apply a little sharpening. So it's up to you to look at the image very closely to see if the pixels are sharp enough. Now, as we go through this lesson, I'll show you sharp versus non-sharp. One of the things you want to make sure of, a lot of people say that you should work on your image first and do your sharpening at the end before you output or save. I disagree with that because the original pixels on a RAW file or even the JPEGs that don't have a lot of sharpening are soft on the edges and if you're working on soft edged pixels it tends to smear things. So my philosophy is that you apply some sharpening to get it clean but don't over sharpen it and I'll define that as we go through this lesson and then work on your image when the pixels are clean so that they don't muddy up and in the end if you do need a little bit more then you can always add some. So let's get started on this lesson. In Photoshop there are five different ways to sharpen an image. They're all under the filter menu under sharpen. There it is. One, two, three, four, and five. There is a sixth method that I use that involves another filter called the high pass filter. And I like this one better than everything else. So let's get started. You're going to run into the amount, radius, and threshold sliders in some of the sharpening filters. What this is, the amount. The computer is really taking and looking at side-by-side -side pixels, bright pixel and a dark pixel. When you're sharpening, effectively, the computer makes the brighter pixel brighter and the darker pixel darker, darker and therefore increases the contrast. And if those pixel, it, pixels, whew, hard to say, if those pixels are along an edge, the edge gets more distinct which sharpens your image. If they are not along an edge however what you end up is getting electronic noise. So there's a big trade-off between sharpening an edge and getting too much noise in an image. So we'll go over that as we roll along. Higher amount of the higher the amount the more contrast but also depending more noise. Radius is the area that is affected by the amount slider and that is the area that goes beyond a bright and dark pixel. More radius, more area. If it's lesser radius, a lesser area. In other words, if you had just an edge, you could add more radius and it wouldn't hurt anything. If you have the entire image, even if you have like a sky, as you increase the radius, it will begin to affect lesser contrast pixels and you will begin to get noise. That's what causes the noise. Threshold calculates the amount of difference in contrast between neighboring pixels, similar to the radius in some respects. So if you use a larger threshold, the larger the threshold, the less areas that will be affected. This is kind of the opposite of radius. They do similar things. What I tend to do is the threshold, I can't quite figure it out completely, so I keep the threshold low, so I know that's going to apply in contrasty areas only, and I'll work the radius to move it away to see how far out that you can affect the area without killing it with too much noise. You play with these back and forth. Let me demonstrate. 